All right. So week one for masterpieces of world literature is the epics uh, Gilgamesh and Iliad. Introduction. Literature is the mirror of society. This adage is one of the most commonly used definitions of literature. Cliché as it may sound, still it is true. Literature traces the past, mimics the present, and sometimes it also predicts the future. A piece of literature describes a milieu, a collection of it may describe an epoch, and great ones determine what will be. Great as it sounds, literature's power is still under the control of the human mind. A well-written piece might be a trash for someone who don't understand. A piece of literature may have two extremely diverse interpretations. A piece of literature can be a catalyst and at the same time a freezer. A piece of literature can promote unity and at the same time evoke division. Needless to say, literature is capable of doing things that may vastly change the pace and the face of history. Since literature transcends both the old and the civilized world, it would be a difficult job to learn and discover the beauty of it. Nevertheless, this module will help you in this difficult yet worthwhile endeavor. This module will track back literatures from the classic times, meaning Greek, Roman, and even literatures from the early ages up to the middle ages, the dark ages, the renaissance, and up to the contemporary times. Alright, so let's uh, now go to the first uh, story, the epic about uh, Gilgamesh, or the epic of Gilgamesh. So an epic is a long story about a hero, so just disregard um, the one that I put there, it should be, this word right here should be story and not epic. So here is a picture of Gilgamesh on the right side of your screen, displayed in the Louvre in Paris, France. Okay, the image is from Wikipedia. So let me now um, tackle about the Epic of Gilgamesh. The Epic of Gilgamesh is an epic poem from ancient Mesopotamia that is often, often regarded as the earliest surviving great work of literature. It is about the king of Sumerian city-state, Uruk, named Gilgamesh, whose arrogance annoys the gods and goddesses in the heavens. Because of this annoyance, the deities created a hairy creature named Enkidu, whose aim is to humble and kill the proud king. Enkidu stays in the wilderness, and so Gilgamesh sends Shamat, a temple girl, to seduce and tame his rival. When Gilgamesh and Enkidu finally meet, they realize that they have equal strengths, and so no one can overpower the other. And because of this, they decide to stop fighting and later on to become sworn brothers. They embark on a journey and they are able to kill a monster named Humbaba. Annoyed on what happened, the goddess Inanna sends the bull of heaven to kill both Gilgamesh and Enkidu. The sworn brothers kill the bull but Enkidu dies as well. Saddened by the death of his friend, Gilgamesh goes to the underworld to save Enkidu. He meets Utnapishtim, who warns him of a forthcoming flood to strike Uruk. Utnapishtim survives the flood above an ark he has built where he has also housed the animals of the field. For his deed, the other gods gave him a gift of immortality. Envied by this gift, Gilgamesh sent out on a journey to find a boxed horn-like plant at the bottom of the sea that will make him young again. Gilgamesh, by binding stones to his feet so he can walk on the bottom, manages to obtain the plant. When Gilgamesh stops to bathe, it is stolen by a serpent who sheds its skin as it departs. Gilgamesh weeps at the futility of his efforts because he has now lost all chance of immortality. So that sums pretty much sums up the story of Gilgamesh, a story about a king of a city-state who sets out 
on a journey to find um, more or less the secrets to immortality but failed and on his way had his adventures with his equal in strength which is Enkidu and together they kill the bull of heaven sent by the gods so there are other varieties of this story uh, there are other versions from other civilizations and other iterations as well okay, let us now go to the introduction of fiction so fiction is an imaginative composition which may or may not be based on history or fact okay fiction means it is only conceived in the mind of the author author and it's not based on facts okay so it's only fantasy elements of fiction first one we have the plot the plot is a series of events knit together following the principles of cause and effect it is also deemed to be an arrangement of incidents narrative structure the organization of a narrative and the logical sequence of actions a plot can be organized in two ways the first one is through chronology chronology which means that the events are arranged according to time and space so chronological order you know following uh, time and the second one is through climax which means that the events uh, are organized according to order of suspense there are also two types of plot. The first one is called organic, which means the story sprouted from just one conflict. And the second one is episodic, which means there are two or more sources of conflicts. Right, Climax based, uh, means the events are organized according to order of suspense. So when the story comes to its peak, that is the climax. All right, if uh, the conflict is just one in the story, it's called organic. Whereas if there are two or more conflicts, the, uh, the kind of plot is episodic. Okay, let us now go to the second element of fiction, conflict. The conflict is considered as the soul of the plot and it is the tension between opposing forces in the story. It can be external, which means the conflict is from outside forces, or internal, which means the conflict resides with the main character. Okay, external conflict, um, outside forces, or uh, the hero might be in conflict with another character, whereas if the conflict is internal, the hero is in conflict with himself. Here are the types of conflict. Physical conflict means man versus nature. So the main villain of the story is nature. For example, the story is about a man who survives a storm. So the uh, main conflict is versus nature. Social conflict, man versus man. The typical one, we always see this in uh, other stories stories in most stories rather a character is in opposition with another character especially in soap operas for example okay next one fish a uh, psychological conflict man versus self so he is or the main character is in conflict with himself he is for example if a character is struggling uh, to decide about something which involves his own good or the good of others so in his mind he is um, trying to decide which is best decision and then cosmic man versus God all right okay next element of fiction we have character all right characters in the story are the moral agents of actions they are invented personages in fiction there are two types of characters namely major and minor
Under major characters, we have the protagonist, which is the central character where the story revolves, and the antagonist, which prevents the protagonist in solving the conflict. Under minor characters, we have Foil, who has the opposite traits of the main protagonist, the confidant, who serves as the friend of the protagonist, and the background characters, who are not closely re related with the protagonist. We also have two kinds of character. The first one is round, which means the character was able to undergo change, while the second one is flat, which means there was no change in the outlook and action of the character. All right. Next one we have setting. The setting serves as the background of the story, may it be physical, mental, or spiritual. It serves as the backdrop and sets uh, the mood of the characters. There are three main elements of setting. The first one is time, which sets the duration of the events. Next is place, which talks about the locality or where the events happen. And the third one is atmosphere, which is the emotion or the mood. Next one, we have theme. Theme is considered as the central message of the story. It is the universal truth expressed in the text. The theme, what is the moral lesson, more or less, right? Next one, we have point of view. This pertains to the vantage point where the story is narrated. Below are the, are the different types. So first person point of view, a principal character in the story is the one narrating it. So point of view, you might be familiar with this if you are an avid Wattpad reader, right? It is very much used in there. Second person is an indirect disclosure of narrating, narrating self for characterization and analysis. Third, per third person or unlimited, also known as omniscient point of view, wherein the narrator is an all-knowing maker. Third person, limited, also known as the central intelligence point of view, the author chooses a character from whose consciousness the entire story is told. Camera eye presents the dialogues and the incidents of a narrative like a mechanical recording device. Revolving point of view characterized by a shift from one point of view to another. And composite point of view gives a comprehensive view of the events and incidents in the story through the different angles adapted by several narrating characters. Okay, let's skip the activity. You might just view the activity when you receive the copies of the modules. Next story, we are going with The Iliad by Homer. So Homer, by the way, this is the picture of the Iliad, book 8, lines 245 to 53, Greek manuscript, late 5th, early 6th centuries AD. Okay, Homer is considered as the ep greatest epic writer in Greece, although his existence is oftentimes doubted. Some even conclude that Homer could be a woman, and some would even suspect that Homer represents a group of people. Amidst these theories, many would agree that Homer is the blind poet who changed the world through his writings. His two epics are considered hallmarks of good literature, and to understand these topics, backgrounding about the Trojan War is very much necessary. Some attribute the war to Helen, who is termed as the face who launched a thousand ships. But the ultimate root can be attributed to the pageantry of the goddesses, or the story of the judgment of Paris. So the goddesses Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite decide to ask among themselves, who is the fairest? They can't seem to decide, that's why they ask the help of a mortal named Paris, who is from Troy. The goddesses bribe Paris, but in the end, he chooses Aphrodite because of her offer. It is very difficult to resist. Her offer is the most beautiful girl in the world, Helen. There mustn't be any problem, except for the fact that she is already married to the king of Sparta, Menelaus. Because of all of this, uh, because of 
This, all of Helen's past suitors, who made a pact to protect her marriage to the man who deserves her, joined forces to take her back to Sparta. The army is loosely known as the Greek, and some would call them Achaeans. The Greek forces, led by the brother of Menelaus, Agamemnon, and the mighty lineup of soldiers include Achilles, Patroclus, and Odysseus. The epic Iliad is about the last 50 days of the 10-year Troy siege. It circles around the conflict between the main characters, Achilles and the, lead, the leader of the group Agamemnon. The conflict sprouted from a dispute over some slave girls. Because of this, Achilles decides to leave the ranks. One thing that is not so beneficial for the Achaeans, for Achilles is the strongest warrior. His mother dipped him in the river Styx when he was just a baby. Agamemnon tries to convince Achilles to join him once more, but the former is convinced that he shouldn't. And so, Patroclus, who is the closest friend of Achilles, volunteered to join Agamemnon and to pretend that he is Achilles. Patroclus borrowed Achilles' armor during the war, but unfortunately he was killed by Hector. One thing that caused greatest gift or greatest grief of Achilles. To seek vengeance, Achilles killed Hector and dragged Hector's body around the tomb of Patroclus. Iliad is a tragedy, and if one is interested in to know what happened to Achilles, he died when Paris shot one of the heels of Achilles, which is his weakest part since it was not submerged in the river Styx when he was just a baby. So if you want to know more about this story, there is actually a movie adaptation of the Iliad entitled Troy. If you have already watched it, you may be familiar with the story. So Achilles in the movie was played by actor Brad Pitt, whereas Paris is played by Orlando Bloom, Helen is played by Diane Kruger, and Hector is played by Eric Bana. So you might have at least once watched the video in the past. Okay, so for your assessment, you are just going to explain the plot setting theme and other questions regarding the two stories we have discussed so you might as well just visit or read your modules for the activities related to the topics for week one so that is all for this discussion if you have questions you can ask them through the official group chats in messenger or in the neo LMS or during the virtual sessions. Okay, thank you for listening to this discussion.